Well, who wins this one I think is Ruin because when I look at these first two games we watched, I feel like Ruin could have won both games. The second game made a lot of sloppy mistakes. But, okay. uh, but I feel like his play, if, if executed properly, was a little bit better than reality. So if executed without without as many errors. Okay. Now, uh, which two players advance? That's a really tough question right now. I want to say... I, I still want to say Haiva and Sulky, actually. I do. Okay. But I, it's, but I, it's fair. I the mean, thing is, like, if, if Haiva plays like, in bad in bad shape today, anything could change. But if Haiva loses Sulky, he's not getting out of this group. Haiva has to be Sulky, I think. I think so, too. Uh, but I think he will. Wouldn't be too surprised, actually. Sulky's ZVZ has been suspect, basically, always. So, anyways, back for this match. It's close, one to one. Ruin going up against reality. At the GSL Code A. Sponsored by Hot Six. Top right in the yellow. Cross player for Incredible Miracle. He is. Ruin. Cut his hair a little bit shorter. To the bottom left in red, the Terran player. He is. Reality. I actually want all four of these players in Code S. I really do. Me too. In fact, I forget when I looked at the groups which group I said was Group of Death, but this one's it. <laughs> this is the Group of Death in Code A. Did you? Was there one that stuck out to you as being significantly better than this one? Uh, not off the top of my head, no. Mm. I, I guess really we should look at the groups after this and refresh our minds. Yeah, there there are a few groups I I looked at where I felt like. Well, that group's kind of odd. That's kind of weak. Like the group we had last night, the second one was just a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. It just, it just, it doesn't come off to me as like, wow, all of these players should be in Code S, yeah. absolutely. Um, but a few of them came off weak, but all the other ones seemed pretty strong to me. Not like there was a group of death, but that they were all pretty tough but, groups. I mean, the, the previous yeah. group we had today, for example, yeah, Journey did not belong, but in general, that group was pretty stacked otherwise. It definitely had uh, three very strong players in it, yeah. even though Deer maybe didn't play up to snuff. That, that's true. That is true. I mean, he's got a lot of stresses, of course, you know, departing from his team and all that. Mm -hmm. Same with Journey, you know, you could say. He that's just true. recently left that's his true. team. Well, uh, this Ooh. probe trying to do a bit of harassment here. Doesn't quite get any kills, but causes a lot of lost mining time. I find it interesting uh, that he's going Command Center first twice now. Yeah. He's taking these big maps and saying, screw it, I'm going for it. Even though uh, Command Center first, you know, this was like super popular for a while, and then it fell out of popularity a little bit. Reality uh, doing his part to bring it back into the forefront. Oftentimes PBT is played in the greed fashion, where yeah. you decide you know, how much tech am I going to get with my upgrades at the same time without having any attacking units. Yeah. And against a CC first, sometimes you'll have a player like Creator who just like goes double forge and robotics with just one gateway. And, yeah. yeah. And your, your pressure coming out after a CC first with a lack of stim, especially with the Mothership Core in Heart of the Swarm, is just like so... You, you can't do anything. Yeah. It's so that's I think that's why it's not as common anymore. Yeah. I, oh, wow. Is he going to get this? One more tap. Ooh, no. That's a Marine there. Space Marine. And control, call it. Yeah. Space Marines run funny, by the way. Look at that. Yeah, they do. They're disproportional as well to regular human body. Uh, you know, later on, if there's any sort of Oracle harass or even like a Zealot drop, that one low health SCV could be the first one to die. That's true. Not going to repair that, probably. You may as well with your extra APM harass anything you can. Extra hits can. I mean, Worst case scenario, it'll eventually take some medevac energy, right? Yeah. Every little bit. StarCraft is a game of small advantages. Sometimes big advantages, but oftentimes small as well. All right, so one forge. Yeah, just one. He also cut uh, gas mining and delayed his core in order to get his nexus up faster mm -hmm. as a response to this. So we'll see what he goes with this one forge. I think he's going to go robo. But also, you know, actually Twilight Council with one yeah. forge has been quite popular. I would suspect Twilight over Robo here. Yeah, but on this map especially too, the more I last, think about it. Like last year, if I saw this Forge, I'd be like, oh, definitely Robo coming up, you know? 
One gate, he's making some stalkers. There's a forge. Okay, Robo's next. If he wants but to take the third base that's to the left uh, of his natural, which I think is probably what he wants to do, mm -hmm. then I think charge is a much better choice. I don't even think uh, Colossus can actually walk between the main and that other third base. He's like just gonna commit wow. here. He should lose every marine with good micro with the mothership. Yeah, he too. almost lost two stalkers though. Yeah, almost. Oh, he loses oh, wow. one. Wow, he's gonna lose both. I think. Oh, oh, just barely does it. That was almost ridiculous. He like scans to see fantasy. if it lived. He's like, <laughs> wow. no, he's scanning the main base. It's like what I do when I nuke somebody. <laughs> no matter what I scan, I just have to see the nuke land. It's important for morale. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, a couple more gases being added. Okay, there is the robo. All right. So. Yeah, you actually know you can walk down from the. Yeah, you can. Okay. Hmm? Uh, for some reason, I thought based on the the mini map, like it's so small on my screen, I thought there was like a gap in between the main and, and the possible third that you could potentially take below your main to where the colossus like, couldn't walk. I thought there was some dead space there, maybe. But I think there is. I think if you walk out of like that little left part. Like, if, if that was a, a breast, oh, a breast that we're looking yeah, at, yeah. at the left nipple, I think you could walk out. <laughs> see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You might be right on that. I'll keep an eye. Because that might be uh, two levels high, actually. I'm not sure. The level below the main base is the natural, then the level below the natural is the third that you're talking about. Yeah, so it, I'm just thinking about this. If you wanted to take the third base there, the Colossus can kind of bounce between a little bit. Mm -hmm. Not something that often is a deciding factor about where you take your third base, but just something to think about. Yeah. Okay, so, just adding on some more barracks right now for our Terran player. No third command or anything. In fact, he's going up to five racks, it looks like. And that means that he's definitely going to have to put on really, really heavy pressure. Yeah, you might even do an SCV pull. When you commit to five racks off of two commands, it's, uh, it's definitely a tell. That's one of the things as a Protoss player you want to scout for, is yeah. how many before that, that command center so that you can be ready for a big push that's incoming. Speaking of big pushes, that scan misses the four gateways that are being added with plus two armor and charge. Five, Five six, six. Okay, wow. Archon charge zealot plus two armor. Is that what we're about to see? It looks like it. Seven. Eight gate, Eight gate coming up. All right, well, it's definitely that now. <laughs> As you as think he's gonna? I mean, he's gonna have to add the archons, though, right? He can't oh, just for do sure. it without it. No, he. Ha I would. I mean, I guess he could use sentries, but you wouldn't, because that doesn't make any sense. Because you have charge lots, and sentries don't combo with that as well as archons do. Yeah, the archons. I would really expect that, but we don't. I mean, he hasn't made the temple archives. He doesn't need it yet, but he should add it very soon. Yeah. Well, I would. I would think it would actually be added before all those gates. He has a lot of gas right now. And I like that he's adding the Immortals as well. This is like a very old school build. Rune is actually busting out a lot of old school stuff right now. He's got a warp as a head toward the main. That's going to be... I mean, he could warp in a lot of Zealots in the main base and just do that. Yeah. This is a good time. There's actually a lot of scouting on the map from Rune. He realizes that the army has, in fact, moved out. What is he going to do? Is he, He's doing it. Well, he has eight gateways, man. He can make a lot of units. And actually, Rune is just deciding to counterattack right now. Not going to come home. Already that Nexus can on. Three sentries and an immortal. You are not breaking through there. You are not, man. And you know what? He's going to eventually push most of these zealots back. But there's still some in the main. Combat shields will finish here. But the SCVs that are being killed, pretty out of hand. Does not kill the warp prism. That means more and more zealots coming through. Should be able to defend this with good control in the main. The next round of warp bins are going to be ready soon. Temple Archive, though, I feel could be a, could have been up a lot earlier. He's got a lot of gas here. Could be using to make some Archons. But there's the Nexus Cannon again in the main. Not quite targeting correctly with that Immortal. Hopefully this one comes up and uh, snaps the neck of those Marauders. I think this is uh, just the end. Well, 49 workers killed. I think uh, no one will call you wrong for that, Wolf. Six SCVs to 48 probes at this point. And with eight gates, it's pretty hard to imagine Rune not being able to stop these five remaining Terran units. Well, reality's skill and, uh, you know, is basically his, I would say, ability to prolong games and play the super late game is not what you want in uh, this matchup. And well, you don't worry, because we get to see him play against the Zerg. <laughs> <laughs> well, this dance that we just saw from the Zelts was pretty cute. GG. And Ruin takes that first match 2-1. to one. Really strong play, excellent play by him, and I would say good play by Reality as well, but Ruin definitely was a step ahead overall in the series.
Yeah. Even though he lost that game two and nothing really ended up working out for him except for catching a couple medevacs, uh, still, I think that he showed himself to be a bit be of a better player in that matchup at least. Yeah, I agree with you. And uh, for reality's sake, at least uh, the next match he plays will be in that uh, TVZ matchup. Not going to play for loss again unless he plays uh, Ruin again in the final match. So, I, I have to say, I feel like reality's play was, was good, but Ruin was just a little bit better prepared. Like, yeah. he, he just, his builds flowed like Yes, work crisp. they flowed very well. I think that's the right word for it. Like, he always had something to do. He always knew what he was doing next. Not that Reality didn't. The more I think of it, like, Reality basically knew what he was doing. I think game two, the game he won, was the game where he was most confused about what he was supposed to do. Yeah. But, you know, that's the way it is. Uh, let's go ahead and jump to a quick commercial break. And when we come back, a ZVZ. Sulky against Hiva.